Today, we are going to be creating a device to cook using the sun. So this is the fun panel cooker. This design was created by Tion Tan and he has given me permission to share it with you today. The way it works is the sunlight reflects off of these two panels here and is concentrated down to your cooking vessel. So let's learn how to build this. So here are the items you're gonna to need to build your fun panel cooker. You're going to need, first of all, a cardboard box. Now, it doesn't have to be a heavy duty cardboard box. In fact, any cardboard box will do. However, we do want the sides to be big enough and you want one side, preferably, to be a square. All right, you're also gonna need aluminum foil for the reflective parts. You'll need something to cut that cardboard with and I have three types of cutters here. Um, I have just a regular pair of scissors. I have this special cardboard cutter by Canary and you can buy these online. Um, and I also have these high leverage right angle shears and these are actually designed to cut cardboard and that's what I'm gonna be using today. But if you don't have these, feel free to use any anything to cut the cardboard. It shouldn't be too much of a problem and we're not going to have to cut a lot. You're also going to need some white glue and um, a paintbrush or something to spread the glue on. If you don't have a paintbrush or you don't have anything, you can always use your finger or use your sister's finger. You're also going to need a little bit of water and a container to put all the glue in um, and you're going to need this. This is a special paper jig that you use to measure the 15 degree angles that we're going to need. All right, we're gonna start by cutting off the side. Now, when I look at this box here, which I just picked up at my local box store, <laughs> um, you can see that uh, this side here looks the most square. So I'm gonna use that side for my cooker. And I'm gonna start by just cutting right up this side. And as you can see, these scissors are wonderful for cutting cardboard. We'll open that up. I'm gonna cut the other um, edge right here and that gives me my one side. Um, I also want to cut off one of the flaps. We're going to keep one on but we'll cut the other one off. So we'll take this flap off right here. And I have this little thick piece where the box is glued together and I'll just carefully tear that off so that it keeps my panel flat. There's one panel, and now I'm gonna make the other one. So now we have our two pieces of cardboard cut exactly the same from the opposite sides of the box. It's now time to draw our 15 degree fold lines for our fun panel cooker. We're gonna start by using this special jig, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make that jig right now. We're gonna make the jig for your fun panel cooker. And all you'll need is scissors and a piece of paper. I'm gonna start with the paper. If I fold it up like this, lining it up with the corner and the side. I'm gonna now cut this strip off to make a square. If you already have square paper, you can skip this step. Maybe you do a lot of origami and you just have a lot of square paper. We're done with the scissors, so, and we don't need that strip. Save that, make a bookmark or something else fun. Now we're gonna take this and fold it in half. All right, like that. Open that back up. You're gonna notice two of your corners have a crease running to the corner and two do not. Take one of those corners that does not have a crease and bring it up to the middle line here. Don't fold yet because we also need to line up this corner as well. So I'm gonna slide this along the middle line until I get to that corner. Once I have the corner there and it's on the middle line, I can hold those down and make a crease. This angle over here is now 60 degrees. If I take this page and fold it over, right along here. I will now bisect to that angle, producing a 30 degree angle, half of 60. We're almost there. 
we just need to cut that 30 degree angle in half. So if I bisect the 30 degree angle, I get two angles that are equal and they are 15 degrees, you got it. So if I fold this in half like so, again, lining up the corner, almost looks like a paper airplane. There I have my 15 degree angle. If I go ahead and open that up all the way, I have six 15 degree angles and I'm ready to apply this to my cooker. Your jig is done. We're gonna take our jig and we're gonna place it in one corner of our fun panel cooker right along the seam where this edge of the box is. So put that there with the lines coming out from here. And I'm just gonna mark, put a little dot at each of those 15 degree rays like that. And I'm gonna do the same on the other lid. That's not a lid. It's a side. But you know what I mean. I have, okay, so I have my 15 degree angles marked. Now I need to draw lines through those to create my rays. I'm gonna start right down here in the corner and uh, you could use a yardstick or meter stick, but I've got this box of tin foil right here. And, I'm gonna go ahead and just use that. So line it up with the dot here and then the one up above and draw a line through. Once again, here's that fold flap so you can kind of see where that is. Right. And I'm just gonna do the same for each one. Line it up with the dot and then draw a line. We'll do that again and again. And go ahead and extend these out all the way to the edge. And as you can see, it didn't come to a perfect corner, but that's okay. Um, it's not a perfect square, but nothing's really perfect, is it? We're gonna do the same for the other panel. So we, now we've got our rays drawn on each of our pieces exactly the same way. There's just two more things we need to do before we coat these in foil. And that is, the first thing we need to do is we need to cut on one of the pieces a little flap right here. So first I need to measure halfway along this folded part and it's pretty easy to do. Um, you could use a ruler. I found that mine is just about halfway is the width of one of the flaps. So I'm gonna just draw a line right there. And then I'm gonna cut along this line this little folded piece right here up to that line. So again, I'll grab my scissors and cut right up to that fold. Like that. The next thing we have to do before we put the foil on is we're going to score these lines. Now, you could use a ruler again, or um, and you don't have to use uh, anything sharp. You just need uh, something to put a dent in it. Uh, you could use a ballpoint pen, you could use the end of your Sharpie, or I just use a pair of closed scissors and I carefully lay my ruler or tool along there and just gently push. You don't wanna cut through, you just wanna make a dent in the cardboard. And you're gonna do this to all of the rays for each of the pieces. Um, in addition to doing the rays, we're also going to score the line we drew on the center of the flap on this piece. So I'll do all of my rays, and then I'm going to come over to this line here in the center and score that again, just very gently, just enough to make a dent. And there we have it. Do the same to the other piece. Of course, don't do this on the other piece, just the rays. So now we need to attach some aluminum foil to this. And the best way to do that is to make a sheet of aluminum foil that's just a little bit longer than your box. Now, if your foil is more narrow, it's okay. You can do two strips or two sheets, or maybe you cover just the square and then the flap. Um, just whatever you do, 
try to uh, cover the entire surface because the more reflective surface we have here, the more um, sun energy is going to be reflected to your cooking vessel. So we're going to take a sheet of aluminum foil here and we want to make it as long as this and a little bit longer. Now, pay very close attention to your foil. There is, on all aluminum foil, a shiny side and a side that's a little more dull, a little less shiny. And we want the shiny side facing out. So, flip that off to the side, and now we're gonna mix up some glue. Um, we're gonna take some glue here, and I'm just using regular old white glue. Just open that up, and dump some into whatever container or bowl you're using. Now you could just use this glue exactly how it is right out of the container. However, if you're gonna try to spread it around, I found adding a tiny bit of water, cheers, just a tiny bit, we're talking just a drop like that, helps to uh, spread the glue around a little more evenly. And we're gonna mix that in with the water, creating a more watery, glue. All right, I've got my glue and I'm ready to start brushing it onto my cardboard. So I'll brush that on and we just want to make sure you cover every part of the surface. Now if you're working in a hot and dry environment like I am out here in the garage, um, you're going to need to work sort of quickly. However, if you're working indoors, you probably won't have to work as fast because this glue won't dry on you. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover the entire surface here and then we'll be right back to attach the foil. Okay, I've got my cardboard covered and now I'm gonna attach my aluminum foil. Again, make sure that you're putting the dull side to the glue and I'm just gonna flip it right over on top. Also, check your fingers, make sure you don't have glue all over those because that can dull the cardboard. So get that glue off there as much as possible and then push down, just smoothing it from the center to the outside. You don't wanna push, it, you don't wanna push too hard, you don't wanna rip the foil. It is rather thin compared to uh, heavy metal. So I'll rub that on there. Um, this is where if you have like a paper towel or you have a sock, <laughs> you could use that to rub it on too because it um, can help smooth out that surface and get a nice shiny reflective surface. The smoother this is, the more reflection will happen. And just make sure you push down good on those creases to really stick that foil to it. And now here's where you're gonna wanna let it sit and dry completely. I'm so impatient, I might not, but you should. So now both of your panels are covered in reflective foil with the shiny side facing out and you have patiently, patiently, let both of them dry completely. Now we need to fold the excess foil up uh, around the back. So simply just take the foil and just flip it up. You could go ahead and tape this down if you like. In fact, it's recommended because that will make your uh, cooker last a lot longer and be a bit more durable. But for today's purposes, I'm going to simply fold this up like so. We also want to make sure we uh, open up this little flap again. So the easiest way to do that is just take your nail and just Run it right down that little fold, right down the little cut, and now it's nice and open for you. Go ahead and do that on the same, uh, same thing on the other piece. Fold that over, and now we are ready to assemble the cooker. To assemble your solar fun panel cooker, the first thing you need to do is take the piece that is not cut, it has the full flap, and put the rays off to one side. You're also gonna find your other panel and find where those rays are. So you can find them by uh, bending them up just gently. You give them a little fold and a 
you can find those rays. So we've got the two vertices right here where the rays extend, and this is a, the solid panel, the one that's not cut. And we're gonna tape this entire side up right here. So this whole side's gonna get taped up. If you have aluminum foil tape, you can tape it right on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this old um, duct tape that is a little too psychedelic for my taste, and we're gonna use that uh, on the back side. So simply take both, once you have it lined up, take both pieces, flip them over, and we're gonna tape it up. Don't worry if they don't line up right here at the top. The most important part is to have them lined up. Here's that little flap, right? And we're gonna line that straight up, straight across the piece of tape. Tape right down the center. Just to make sure it sticks well, I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on either side of that too. If you had already taped down your aluminum foil, you probably wouldn't need to add these pieces, but I wanna use up this tape because it's just quite loud. All right, so that's all taped up. Now we need to assemble the bottom part, and this is where it gets a little tricky, so we're gonna pop the camera angle up. So stand your solar cooker up so that your panel, your little flappy piece right here that we cut is uh, sitting off to the side. And simply fold it in half as if you were folding it back into a box. We're gonna close this part down. And we're only gonna tape, if you open this flap, we're only gonna tape right here on this little section. We're gonna keep this flap open because that's gonna need to tuck into the cooker. So once you have it lined up here at the bottom, this is where it might be helpful to have a friend or a parent. And you are just gonna take a piece of tape and tape this part from that fold up to the top. Again, keeping this part open so that it can open up just like a little uh, box lid almost. I'm gonna add a piece of tape to either side just to tighten that up. And guess what? We're ready to start cooking. So here is how you set up your cooker. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to gently fold along those score lines. And uh, if you scored it well, it shouldn't be too hard to do but just give them a nice crease, there we go, so that your cooker kind of flops over. Now take this little floppy, flappy part and tuck it into the cooker, like so, all right? And there it is, your cooker is ready. If uh, you have a cooking pot, uh, whatever cooking vessel you're gonna use, um, you'll set that down right here in the center and the sun will reflect into that and cook it that way. You can also, depending on the sun's angle, flip it over this way and place your cooker like so. If the sun is a little lower in the sky, this might work better. I will make another video on how to use this to cook, and we'll cook something, but that's a subject for another time. So there you have it, the fun panel cooker. I'd like to thank Tian Tang again for allowing me to use his design and share it with you. If you'd like to see his original design, uh, you can check the description down below. I will make a link to the PDF that has his original directions. He has a collapsible version, which is great if you want to travel with this. And I hope if you create a solar cooker that you will share it with me. You can send me an email at doingthingsandmakingstuff at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing about your solar adventures. Thanks again.